Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. from Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that his, the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near it. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to, in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today, is, for today is Psalm 99. You speak responsibly by the whole verse. The Lord is king, let his people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established everything. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of, greatness of the Lord our God, and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses is in the air among the priests, and standing over among those who call upon his name. They call upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree he gave them.
proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. A reading from Corinthians. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. For, the per for this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imper imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The
The past couple of weeks, we've been spending time talking about Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Uh, It seemed right to discuss in a little more detail with you the difficulty of reading an epistle, since it's like listening into one side of a conversation, and then to explain some of the problems in Corinth and Paul's answers to them. But I did warn you uh, that all of this, and chapter 15 in particular, was leading up to a bit of a confessional of how um, I became the person standing here before you. So here we are. I was not raised uh, in a home where becoming a priest would have been uh, foreseen or expected. We were raised what I call Christian in a bag, right? Like good people went to heaven, bad people went to hell, and we were good people, so no worries, right? Uh, I joke with folks that my great teenage rebellion was becoming obsessed with church, which greatly alarmed my parents, who had thought church attendance to be unnecessary, if not a little bit fanatical. But as I reflect on it, My great teenage rebellion was actually becoming obsessed with the hard questions of existence. What was the nature of God? What was the meaning of life? And perhaps most urgently, what was the meaning of death? The urgency to find those hard, to find the answers to those hard questions came from my experiences of death, who had come too close, too often for me to ignore. I lost my best friend in a car accident at the age of 13. And then from the age of 17 onward, death kept this regular schedule of visiting and escorting from my life significant people, family and friends, all within the ages of about 25 to 60, some after a year of illness, some with the swiftness of that last trumpet, but all changed instantly to a state beyond my reach. They were too young, there were too many, it happened too often, and it felt like a curse. But then I knew that this curse was actually upon all of us, right? So where does someone go when haunted by the questions of life and death? Church is still the only good answer I've come across, actually, the only space devoted particularly to that search. I stumbled into an evangelical church that promised a get-out-of-hell-free card if I just said something called the sinner's prayer, right? But they also offered me the Bible as the, you know, indisputable, irrefutable, indestructible word of God. (laughs) And I took them seriously. Uh, to their great surprise, I think, and I committed to study it. Within those pages, I found all sorts of conflicting ideas and contradictions, not the least of which concerned death. The Psalms said that the dead don't praise God. Ecclesiastes told me to eat and drink and make the most of my life because that was the best humans could do in an unjust world where nothing happened afterward. The Gospel of Mark ended with an empty tomb and women terrified into silence. Revelation seemed to gather all those strands of belief from the Old and New Testaments and weave them into poetry a psychedelic kind of poetry, but poetry nonetheless. The last vision in the last book of the Bible was not one that the evangelical church provided me. They had talked a lot about disembodied souls going to an eternity of harp strumming and lip smacking righteousness as the damned souls burnt forever below in some hellscape once known as earth. But John the Revelator spoke of heaven coming to earth and of all creation being made new. And then there was Paul, who said that Christ was the first fruits of this promise, that we were, in fact, under a curse that God wanted to undo. 
Paul, who said that the promise had started to break through to us already, and that everything that we called forgiveness and justice and reconciliation and joy are glimpses of that resurrection. Paul claimed this already, but not yet, and that we were agents in between, manifesting this kingdom that was already coming to earth. Ironically, it was the love of strict scripture that would eventually lead me away from evangelicalism, the place that gave me a love for it. I came to the Episcopal Church eventually, and I didn't find pie in the sky when you die, but people who seemed convinced that they were the ones pointing to a reality beyond what we knew. People who served others because they wanted to learn to see Christ in all people. People who could discuss the hard questions with me without needing to answer them. People who opened their hearts in spite of pain and poverty and rivalry, in short, in spite of the reality of death. Religion has been derided as mere escapism, as an opiate of the masses, something to just pacify you, to get you through life, to numb the pain. But what I found was the opposite. In attempting to answer these lofty questions, I was drawn more deeply into a love for the world that was around me. No small feat for someone who lived mostly in her head until then. Maybe I should have expected this, though. Paul ends his letter to the Corinthians with the resurrection of the dead this 15th chapter, this glorious sort of exclamation point, which was actually the whole lens through which to read not just this letter, but the lens through which he believed we should be viewing life. Maybe you'd think that meditation on the resurrection would end for him with some kind of direction to to not worry about the world because it's all going to be raised anyway. But that's not where Paul goes. You've got the last sentence before you today. He says, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Keep at it, he says. Don't run away. Eyes on the world around you. The work you are doing is a part of, is in tandem with the resurrection of the dead. The labor of love is never one that is done in vain. That is the word of the Lord that came alive to me those many years ago. And the word I would like to try to make alive to you every week. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. And for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. And was for our sake, he was under Pontius Pilate. He was and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the one Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as our own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loved us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And let us pray for those in need. Oh, let us pray for Maureen, Fred, Ann Curry, Stephen and Kathy, Cruz Patrickville, Catherine Caldwell, Caulfield, Joshua, Laura, Karen Harrison, Fletcher Hawk and family, Mark Bilevati, Lucy Chavez, Bob O'Brien, Ashley Wright, Gay Murphy, Mary Ann, we pray for all the people of Ukraine, to those caught up in the unfolding war. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that you may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, with conflict in Ukraine, particularly on our hearts, we offer this prayer for the human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through, your, through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors 
accusers of ourselves. We are truly sorrow and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, guys. Ah, peace, Jonah. Peace, Austin. You doing okay? All right, hang in there, man. Peace, Danny. Peace, everyone. Welcome to you. After you finish greeting your neighbor, I invite you to find your seat. Welcome to you all on this final uh, Sunday after the Epiphany. We'll be moving into Lent this next week. A uh, particular welcome to you if you are new among us uh, or if you're uh, watching along uh, from at home. My name is Amber, I'm the rector here at Christ Church, um, and you uh, have found yourself uh, among a, a really lovely uh, community here, and I hope you feel a warm welcome from those around you. Um, if you are new, uh, there's a card hanging from the seat back in front of you. If you would like to fill it out in a few moments, the offering plates will go by, and you can drop it in there uh, in lieu of an offering, and uh, I will be in touch with you this next week to answer any questions you might have about this place or just be able to get to know you uh, better. So again, welcome to you. After the service, if you go out these doors uh, and down the ramp, there is a coffee hour in our parish hall, or if you go out those doors and down the sidewalk and turn back in, uh, coffee hour with refreshments uh, that all are welcome to. At 1010, we have formation classes for children and youth, and we also have something special happening today for an uh, informational meeting on a pastoral care team that is forming, and this will be in the conference room. If you don't know where the conference room but you are, is, but you're interested in going, um, you know, maybe just catch somebody uh, and start asking desperately uh, <laughs> where it is. It's just down the hall and to the right uh, near, the, near the bathrooms over here, all right? We have, a big, we have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, as I said, this is the final Sunday after the Epiphany, so Lent begins on Wednesday. But before that happens, Fat Tuesday's Chili Cook-Off is going to be held, our first annual from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, if you have not signed up, please do so uh, to bring a chili uh, if, if you're interested in, in, in entering the competition. So we are uh, prepared with the number of tables needed for those who would like to participate. Um, and again, if you come in, you'll get a bowl, you'll get to sample all sorts of chilies. There will be a, a, a chili champ crowned at seven. We'll have a jazz band, cash bar, and a liturgy of burning of the greens that will be used in the next days Ash Wednesday services. Those services will be held at noon and 7 p.m. The noon one will be just a spoken Eucharist, uh, a little quicker for you, for those who uh, are on your lunch break. Um, and then the 7 p.m. will be a full uh, uh, Eucharist with choir as well. We'll have a couple of other things happening uh, in, during Lent. Uh, during the season of Lent that you might or might not be interested in. At 5.30 p.m. every Wednesday, we will have a, a contemplative service here. Um, again, spoken, uh, a time for peace, a time to reset in the middle of the week, along with the option for coming forward for anointing with oil and the laying on of hands for healing. There will also be a Bible study that will start up that next Sunday, uh, the first Sunday of Lent, next Sunday um, at 10, 10 a.m. in the conference room if you would like to join me for that. Right, so much is happening. Thanks for staying tuned for uh, these announcements. Um, in a few moments, we will begin uh, the celebration of the Eucharist, and at the right moment, the ushers will direct you forward to the altar rail. We're still serving in one kind, bread only by order of the Bishop of New York. Uh, so if you come forward, 
Hold out your hands, you, uh, either standing or kneeling. You, I can give you a piece of bread. If you need the gluten-free wafer, uh, just let me know. Uh, that is available to you. Or for any reason that you would like, uh, don't feel like you want to receive communion, just cross your arms over your chest, and I will give you a blessing uh, instead. But above all, no matter who you are, no matter what brings you here today, you are welcome at this table. You are welcome among us as we come to meet our Lord in the sacrament here. All that we ask is that you walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. of your glory 
in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but thine cross from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. serve the Lord.